Hi everyone and welcome back to 1118. I am your host Candace, and today we are going to be talking about mental focus and how to really incorporate that with self-care. If you don't know so far with my teaching and my guidance that I like to provide for you guys, it really does incorporate the science, the spirituality that helps you equal out to the self-love. So whether I'm talking about tarot or astrology or talking about the physical body or even just your emotional self, your mental mind also is in connection to that. Just a quick little backstory, what helped me start me on my journey five, seven, eight years ago almost was the fact that I was in a depression state. I was not feeling like myself. I was feeling like I was in this void-esque energy. And it wasn't until I was approached by my oldest, who is now 15, asking me to take a look at me. And with my research mind as a Virgo rising, I literally was like, I have to take initiative to figure out why my mind has now entered into this slope. And that required me to really talk about my mind, to think about my mind, to think about where I am, to acquire what my triggers are. And honestly, I wanted to figure out how does my brain mechanism, how is it making me feel like I can't do the things that I want to do, knowing that that there's things that I do want to do. Now, I do just want to preface and say that I am not a therapist. I am not someone that is licensed that can help diagnose you. I am just someone who has gone through it, sharing her own experiences, and then also providing resources and tips to help you start your journey in finding out what you need to do for you regarding your mind and your mindset. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start this video in regards to self-care activities and strategies that you can do to help focus on your mind. Before we dive into the first chapter of this video, I do just want to preface and say that I truly believe that everyone's mental diagnosis is also related to a spiritual or an energetic thing that has either been passed down to us or it's a spiritual thing that we are here to learn to navigate and to embrace more in this lifetime. I know a lot of people may not agree with me in that aspect, but I truly do believe that we as we are all different individuals have been blessed with certain things that a man, a white man has then said that is a disease or is uh, not society's proper way of mechanizing. It's like they labeled us in a certain way to make them feel better about our differences. Now, can those things be accurate? Yes, but I also just want to preface and say it's your perspective of how you're looking at your mental mindset. And so with that, I do want to say the first thing that we need to do is really identifying the problem. And that sometimes is kind of like the hardest thing, especially if you have been diagnosed with ADHD or maybe you have autism or any neurodivergent. This could be a mental fog. This could be that your mind is so cluttered. This could be that you don't have the energy to really focus and narrow down on the thing that is actually causing you to cause this ripple effect within your mindset. And so really giving yourself that space and that time to identify it first is going to help you with the long way. And I also just want to preface and say that mental fog is something that we all experience, me included, especially with me being a Virgo rising. I am ruled by Mercury. My mind is set in a computer mechanism every single day. And so when some things do not equal out or they don't make sense or they just aren't computing with me, (laughs) I literally get in this fog and I need to sit down and ask myself, how can I actually make this make sense? That's literally been my entire life. I was that girl in school, in my household, in relations being like, hey, I need you to make that make sense. Is that a nigh divergent thing? Absolutely. Do I embrace that version of myself? Absolutely. Because it's a part of me. But I had to give myself that patience and that grace and giving myself that time to really figure out why my mind is feeling a little cluttered. One of the best solutions on helping your mind get uncluttered is really cleaning your environment. I just want to say again, and preface as a Virgo rising, it is a blessing and a curse because as my mind is up here being cluttered, I have to have my physical environment actually cleaned. And Virgos rule the sixth house, which is your home, its routines, its structure in a sense. And so when my house is not clean, when my house looks like 
there's a lot of dust there's a lot of things there's a lot of random stuff there's a lot of things that i know i need to do i can't really give myself that time to get in here unless my environment is good now for my adhd babies i want to sit there and say give yourself an area to do give yourself a thing to do and then try to figure it out and make a list one of the best things that i've been able to do is like when my mind is going up here and it's racing and i know there's certain things that i need to do i give myself that grace and write it down now i may get distracted by other things but at least i wrote it down on that piece of paper and i can come back and say i need to figure that out or i need to finish this so if your environment is what's causing this kind of chaotic and this void and kind of depression state clean up your space a little bit remove some of the clothes fold your clothes put them in a different area so you can get ready to wash them light a candle get some incense open a window maybe not even that just go outside and take a fresh air get yourself some some sunlight some vitamin d that's going to help waken up your senses to kind of bring in that freshness whatever you need to do to kind of help declutter declutter Another solution in regards to getting your mind out of a fog is really doing deep breath work. Again, Virgo energy here. Virgos also rule the nervous system. And so when I was learning that my anxiety and the way that I overload in my sensory, I learned that, especially when I went to therapy, that doing breath work is a great way for me to really help calm down my brain. Now, I just want to preface and say that our brains are literally computers. They are literally our our brains and our eyeballs are taking pictures every millisecond and it's remembering certain things about our life. And when we are triggered around certain things, our body and our mind remembers that feeling and brings up more anxiety when our body is becoming over stimulated okay we are then <sighs> hyperventilating and we're not giving ourselves the time to calm down our body because when we calm down our body it actually helps us calm down our mind which allows us to be more focused and more alert and more availably uh attentive to our energy and what's going on in our surrounded area so one of the things that i learned in therapy was the square method and i talked about this in other videos where really what we're doing is we are breathing in for four we're holding that in for four we're exhaling for four and then we're holding again for four and this actually helps you kind of think about again my mind is a virgo i'm counting in the four it's helping me concentrate on something on top of that i'm help regulating my breath work and by doing that it's actually allowing my body to slow down and to focus more so doing some type of breath work even if that's just deep breathing putting your hand on your chest on and on your belly as well um, giving yourself that sense of comfort and Breathing through the process actually helps you quickly, more alertly, and more calmly get through the situation that you may be feeling that anxiety or that overwhelming feeling. Another solution to this is also just making sure that you're getting your adequate rest. I know um, there, that seems like the most simplest thing, but sometimes we as busy individuals and humans have a lot of things that are challenges in our life that we have to do, go, 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 go. And with me, case in point, I was sick all last week and I was on my period. My body literally said, bitch, please, you've been doing a lot. You've been getting ready to do a lot. And even though you have your self-love challenge, you need to fucking rest because something's about to go on for you energetically. And I knew that, um, in order for me to get the rest that my body needed and to catch up i have been sleeping now this doesn't mean that you go ahead and you take some supplements or you smoke weed or you drink alcohol you don't have any different types of depressants to help you get to that sleep aid unless it's prescribed and you're doing it in a healthy way but at the same time you want to give your body that adequate rest that it needs they say typically eight hours i honestly feel like us females we probably need about like 10 we go through a lot our bodies go through a lot we're processing more things than a male does no offense guys but we need that more rest than males do and so getting more sleep going to bed early um <clears throat> oh that's good going to bed early 
making sure that we are taking our vitamins and things in that nature to help our body get that rest that we need is also going to help you fuel in the direction of making sure that you're getting the adequate sleep that you actually need for your vessel. Another thing that can be a solution is actually taking some downtime and unplugging. Now, I know that may be hard because there's trends, there's a lot of things going on in the world, there's politics, you may need your phone for work, You, I just heard someone needed that for their like trading and their investments, that's fine and dandy, but you can also have apps that were, allow you to minimize your notifications. I particularly on my phone have different profiles and I my profiles are on for a certain reason. My phone goes to sleep mode at 7 o'clock at night. I may not actually go to bed until like 8 or 9, but it's actually removing all the notifications. I have a profile specifically for work so that no notifications from social media or emails are actually coming through. It's strictly work-based. And this is all done on my iPhone, which I'm pretty sure you can do on your Android. It really just depends on how you want to do it, but I think you placing some form of like boundaries on your phone and then allowing yourself to decompress and get away and go out in nature be in mother gaia is also going to be a great way for you to help declutter up here and allow you to bring in self-care activities that can help with your mind and your focus now now that we've talked about certain self-care activities and things that you can do to kind of like decompress and declutter your mind and kind of recenter your mindset i do just want to touch base on a couple of things i did speak earlier about like depression and the void and triggers and I want to dive in a little bit deeper into that because the one thing that a lot of people are starting to do now is go into therapy and I do just want to say and preface for people who are the color of me have generational individuals that say therapy is not healthy and that we shouldn't talk about that we shouldn't indulge our problems into other people we should learn how to mitigate and suffocate our own stuff and i am a thousand percent advocate of saying fuck that um we are not our parents we are not our uncles and we are not our aunts and we are not our cousins we as a new generation are helping not only ourselves but our children and our nephews and nieces see a different way of moving and in order for us to be that hero or that new individual that got us to these little babies we have to give ourselves that care first now this also goes into hand in hand with you in partnerships and relationships you can't ask your partner to get mental help if you yourself are not getting the mental help. You can't sit there and say to someone, you need to be doing this and journaling if you yourself are not journaling and doing the things that you need to do. You need to also take accountability of your mental space. No one else knows what's going up up here but you, okay? And just like me, even though I knew that there were things going on with me in my mindset, it had to take my child at the age of seven, eight years old to sit there and tell me, mommy, you're not the same mommy anymore. Can you figure out what's going on with you so that we can be happier like we used to? It was in that moment that I chose to do something about it. It was in that moment that I chose to learn more about Bob Proctor, about like your paradigm, and really setting myself up for success with going to therapy. Because the more I learned about my brain and how my brain works, the more I was like, damn, um, I need some fucking help. I can't manage and figure out everything up here because I have my own perspective. It's good to get someone else's perspective in regards to my triggers, in regards to my depression, in regards to the things that I feel as there's a void in here, especially when I'm not getting that same sense of help from my family or people that I care about as far as friends or my partner, I have to take that initiative. And so I just want to preface and say that. The second thing I do want to talk about is your emotional triggers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put down below in the description box my emotional triggers. And this is something that I taught a lot when I had my other um, tarot coaching business called Subconscious Moon. I really did dive in deep into your triggers and how to identify your triggers, what to do when your physical vessel is going through those triggers, and how to allow yourself to process both the mental and the spiritual and the emotional things that are interwebbed and connected in regards to your triggers. We are triggered by things that happen to us as a child. 
and it is not on us as a child it is on to the parents and the people who are taking care of us that really didn't help us navigate these specific triggers because we didn't heal those triggers as a young age we now as adults have certain things that will align us to go back into how we felt when we were a kid whether that is feeling unheard unloved um, not being able to be vulnerable or compassionate um, to feel like someone's listening to us to feel like someone's violating us and being able to process that as well so triggers is a big thing and it's not something to play with it's not something to ignore it's not something to think like it's not a real thing it is absolutely a real fucking thing i just want you guys to take notion of that as well the other thing i want to talk about is the void this is something that can grab a hold of you without you really even noticing that it grabbed a hold of you the void is real i've experienced this on numerous occasions before I got into my whole healing journey, during my whole healing journey as I was going through my spiritual awakening, when I left my partner of four years and decided to leave with two suitcases and my kids, when I was homeless, when I have felt really alone. And you guys didn't see any of that, but I experienced that. The darkness and the heaviness and the wanting to not want to be here is real. And I just want to preface and say that if you are feeling that way, please seek out help and find the resources that you need for yourself. Please also understand that what you're feeling is absolutely normal and you're not alone in that aspect. This is just something that a lot of people don't talk about and I, especially when we're in the spiritual community, we make this seem like it's all love and light and la da 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 da. No, the fuck it's not. Especially if you're one of the chosen ones, especially when you're the one that is the black sheep of the family and you're having to go back into your family history and pull out the most darkest, deepest bullshit that you didn't even think that you should even experience in this lifetime, but you're having to right now. And so I want to give yourself that grace. I want you to know that it's real. I want you to know that it's okay to get help and it's not detrimental. It's not you making you any weaker or less than. In my opinion, and hopefully my opinion matters to you, is that when you're seeking help and you're getting the help that you need, you are actually setting the tone for yourself for higher success. It's because you're telling yourself that my mind, my vessel, this body, my emotional self means something. And it means enough for me to take these stances and do something outside of my barrier that's going to help me love me. So I just want to preface and say all those things that are real. And if you need any help or you need any suggestions, please reach out to me. I may not know exactly what to do, but I just don't want you to feel like you're alone because you're not. I got emotional there. <laughs> Um, but with that being said, though, I do just want to sit there and say that I love you guys tremendously. I don't know if you heard that, but that was like, uh, yeah, like I love you guys tremendously. This is your mindset is one of the most important things because without your mind, your emotional self, you can't process those things without your mind. You can't really go in your physical vessel. Your mind, and your spirituality are interconnected. But at the same time, maintaining this thing right here is the most important thing. I truly do believe that science and spirituality equal out self-love. And when you are learning about the science of your mind, it helps you understand the spirituality aspect and how they're intertwined and connected. When you are balancing out those two together, you do initially create this inner lock of love within yourself because there's not so much of this harshness there's not so much of this uh blaming and self-defecating it's actually more embracing a more healing aspect that you start to begin within your inner soul and that is something that i want you guys to truly 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 experience in this lifetime I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please let me know in the comments down below if these tips and tricks or just suggestions helped you at all. Don't forget to download my emotional triggers uh, down below as well. And with that being said, please share this with someone that you feel that can really enjoy this video. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys at our next video. 
Bye, guys.